I left home when I was 13, and I, uh... Hey, man, you got just suspended mean, from junior high, right? Or, or, or kicked out of junior high. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, but, and then, so you had a, a beef with your father? Oh, you pulled a knife on somebody. I was wondering what happened. Vice principal. I'll tell you the story. Yeah, I please do. I mean, not a good thing to do. You know, you're high. <laughs> These days, you can't even carry a pocket uh, knife to school. True. No, but, but, but true. tell me about that story, because, because we're talking about paying dues, and I know... And here's the thing that uh, it was funny when you sent me that text message because I held you in such high regard, but in doing my research about you, there are so many things about yourself that I did not know. Yeah. And man, if you got on the road at 13 years of age, and I know when you had your first pro match, and we'll, we'll get to that, but uh, you paid not just dues in, in the business of pro wrestling, but life dues, you know, getting out and having to sport yourself by yourself. Um, yeah. I. Uh... So what happened with the knife? Well, I try to tell you this, and I just, I can just tell you the truth is all. It was in Toronto, and I was trying to go to school, and it's a junior high school, and still in Canada, I I don't know why. Um, so like it's gym class, and they've got a big swimming pool, and they insist you swim naked. They insist the YMCA's at that back of the insist it, and like. I was like, I was having a hard time with it. And the uh, coach, uh, like I had started to amateur wrestle a little bit, and, you know, whatever. Uh, and uh, the coach was really getting on my case. And uh, I said a few words and all of a sudden the vice principal and like they were cornering me wow. in the locker room. Like I didn't understand. And I had, a, the, um, I had a knife and, I just, I got confused. I just was really scared. Right. And I, I'm there, all of a sudden I had it. And then, you know, things got real ugly then. And, uh, oh, I got uh, kicked out of that school there. Um, it, I wasn't, like, you hear all these, I've never tried to hurt anybody. I I really haven't. I, no, I'm, a bag pipe, I mean, I'm a bagpipe player. Well, right, but you got two guys got you in a corner and self defense. And I didn't understand what's the point. Right. What? Why? I get it. And uh, well, you know, living on the living on the street, just just like uh, that's a hard piece of business there. So uh, I, yeah, I didn't do well in school. I. Um, I've got about a grade eight education. Now I scammed my way. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Now, I, there was a high school I went to, and I broke into it at night, stole the test. This is a true story. Uh, what was the name? Windsor Park. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got to pass this thing. So I broke a window at nighttime, and I ran through the school at nighttime. Went to the where I knew the tests were, grabbed the test, and ran out and hid in the snowbank. And sure as heck. Here come the police because there's silent alarm. Right. Well, I'm in a snowbank. <laughs> I was born in Saskatoon. I'm a snowboy. So I take the test home and like I fill out the test and I'm so proud of myself. And I come in the next day for the test and it's all handed out. Everybody's taking it. And I have the test like under my uh, under my shirt and my tummy, you know. And, you know, I'm really cocky. But ADD kicks in and boredom and so I switch them and. I was done first. Unusual. However, I was so proud, and I put the test there and waved goodbye to my uh, hello, fellow students, and I came back the next day, and they handed out the tests, and it says, and the teacher said, sorry, Rod, wrong test. <laughs> I stole the wrong test. I'm out of here. Really? There's a kid. Awesome. Give me a break. Sorry, Ryan. Wrong, wrong, wrong test. Truth. Classic. And uh, I, I could have done a year in the pen for that. <laughs> oh, Justin, did you ever end up graduating high school? They pretend I did. Uh, I tried to go to school when I was wrestling pro. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, like I went back and I got the key to the city in Winnipeg is where I had my first pro match. But, and I went to visit the school, and they pulled these cards out, like, you got 50%. Yeah. But, you know, this is, if I may, I don't want to bore you. No, yeah, what? I'll, I'll tell you something that I never really talked about. Oof. I was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, which is one of the coldest places on earth. Yeah. No, like 100 below with the wind chill. 
Um, when I was four years old, I got my arm caught in a washing machine wringer, and uh, I couldn't get out. You used to wear, you used to put clothes uh, in the washing machine. It would like squeeze them to get it out. And uh, the washing machine was plugged in. They had undo the light. Uh, the people that were raising me and the ceiling and the plug was in there. And I guess from flailing, you know, I hit the plug and, and hit the uh, emergency thing. Yeah. Two rollers on top exactly. of each other. You yeah. Yeah. yeah I just know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. So my arm right up to here. Mm. And I lived, I was born on 1802 Victoria Avenue. And my aunt was 1602 Victoria. So I ran down the alley and I, I would, I rocked a lot as a kid and I never said anything. And uh, I was just sitting on the chair and, you know, it's Canada. The liquor store is closed at a certain time. So Uncle George, you know, or I'm busy you know, all day. And then blood started to come down and they put me in the hospital. And um, when I got out, they took me right away, away from Saskatoon and put me on an Indian reservation called The Paw, T-H-E-P-A-S. And it's still to this day uh, the toughest Indian reservation in, in Canada it's the home of the World's Trappers Festival. They used to do a program, Wide World of Sports, once a year where they're real trappers. They're not, you know, right. you don't pet the dogs. The dogs right. are chained down. Uh, and, like, they, they had contests of the cutting the logs and who could carry the most uh, pounds of flour, which this local Indian guy carried, like, 500 pounds or something. Right. And he just get this, you know, I'm going to tell you. I've always wanted to, and I'm going to tell you now. Hold it calm, and then I'll quit if you was still talking to me. So I was the only white kid in this Indian reservation. I was so scared. I, I can't tell you how scared I was. And my first grade, um, I, I, just, I begged not to go. And to the point where, and I'm not exaggerating anything, I held on to the man's ankle, and the man mm -hmm. literally moved his foot like a walking dead all the way and cried. Everybody in the hallway watching me, and the teacher's name was Miss Hill. She says, I take care of the little boy. And uh, they left me, and she took out, in Canada, it was legal. It had a handle and this uh, triple leather. And, she, you know, she got me to stop crying there. Yeah. Bring, bring, you betcha, shutting up. And uh, when they taught me, they taught they had a new way of teaching. Do you have a pen, uh, anything, man? So maybe we could get one and as I would go. It's the Steve Austin show pen for me. <laughs> I, I got a pocket knife, folks. <laughs> we'll carve it in you. They, in, so in my very first year in school, uh, the country decided that they're going to change the way to teach children. So with reading, you see, I, I've never read a book. Cover to cover, not even the one I've I wrote. heard you say that in interviews. Straight up shoot, you've never read a book. No, sir. Cover to cover, I can't. A right. script, I have to have someone read it with me. Right. I don't get it. And here's where it came from was instead of teaching you phonics, they taught memorization. Right. And so... Why would they do that? Because the government thought it was a better way to teach kids and instituted it through the country. Then they had a thing called new math, and I'm writing it down for Steve now, and it's division. We'll put 10 into 1,000. Right. What you did is, well, you look at the 10, and on the side, there's a long line. And you go, well, I know 10 goes into 1,000 one time. You subtract it. That would leave 909. Well, it'll go in two times. That's 20. You subtract it. That's 970. And you kept that up, and then you added these numbers and put it up there. Medicine law only has arithmetic. Holy cow. Now, while I was in this Indian reservation, I mean, they hated me. And I wore muckle up. Why, just because you're a white kid? Yeah. yeah. Rep, yeah. I, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a personality trait. It was just you was the... Yes, sir. The, the, I was really scared right. and, you know, an easy target. And then recess, you know, uh, I was kind of like the the foil. But here's what happened. Um, I couldn't go home the way the other kids went. And like in January, February, March, this place is, you can only get around by Caterpillar. I, I beg you people to look it up. The Paw Manitoba, T-H-E-P-S. And I used to have to go by the tree line. And they had these things called timber wolves. I don't know yeah. if you've seen the timber wolf. The big ass wolf. Whole baby yeah. Jesus. No kidding. Yeah. 
You know, they are a pack by themselves. And they would snatch a kid like January, February, March where game was scarce. If they came on a kid, they would snatch the kid. Right. So they taught me. I would have to go by like the tree line so it wouldn't get beat up. And I sang a song. I'm embarrassed. Okay, hang on. You go tell it, Rod. Tell the damn thing. What song were you singing? Uh, John Jacob Jingle Lake. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. The reason I sang it was, if you if you accidentally came in contact with one of these wolves, they'd turn on you. If one of these wolves heard a human voice, more than likely they get away from it because they get shot or whatever. Right. But if you were if you you were quiet and they turned and they saw a little right. piece of game there, boom, they got Jump you. your ass. So. I'm gonna tell you this now. Holy cow! Whoa! So, there the highway was right. Uh, we had a little red shack. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. We had a little red shack, literally, by the railway tracks, and it, it was a company shack, and it had a kitchen, uh, two bedrooms, uh, a lot of rats down in it, and uh, it was right next to the railway tracks, and across the street was the only person who would speak to me. Her name was Arlene Philly, and her dad owned the general store. I'm across the street, and one of my sisters goes to go to school, and I ran across to hug her, and I got hit by a truck. Maybe go, I don't know, 25, 30 miles an hour. I can remember when it hit me, I, I went up and I landed on the pavement, but the the force had me rolling to the ditch, but I can remember my eyes backwards and seeing the tire. And the guy in the truck was uh, an Indian gentleman, been drinking. But back in those days, like, uh, I don't know, he's getting up. Yeah, yeah okay, goodbye, goodbye. And they never took me to the hospital. So, any damage? Don't know. Yeah. Um. So then, during the winter, and I, I'll get out of this in a second, but you need to know. During the wintertime, I have really bad tummy problems. And the only way you can get to the hospital is a Catholic hospital. Is by um, greater uh, caterpillar. Caterpillar, thank you, sir. And to get the caterpillar and bring a kid in, yeah, all right. So they get me in, and I got appendicitis. They take out my appendix. Nothing's wrong with them. I had tonsillitis, so they took out the tonsils. Uh. And then they give me a shot when I cry. Or some, I was by myself there. And so, okay, move on. And in the springtime, um, there's so much snow, and it's a logging industry. There's logs in big puddles of snow. And for some reason, Rod liked to roll on the logs. Right. Oh, and boom, in those in the water, Rod would go. And uh, I got scared to go home because uh, I wasn't supposed to do that. And so I'm with uh, um, I'm with my friend, and sh- her and I rolling on the logs, and we both went down, okay? Well, and I'm too scared to go home. And right across the street is her father's store and next to it kind of like a garage with a pot-bellied stove in it arlene and i went across the street and we took all our clothes off i'm six years old all our clothes off to hang them to get them to dry right but you know we're naked in in the in the garage and arlene uh um arlene's mummy was a very religious woman and like i can only pick up certain points for you here but i remember her coming in and she screamed rape Oh, and she called the police. Yeah. And in those days, there was only one policeman for like, he was an RCMP for like 300 miles in every direction. Right. And uh, so she called that policeman and he came. And that policeman was my dad. Wow. Um, that's how I started my first year. And then, boom, they moved me out of there to another place. And by the time I got like grade three or four, I was so lost. I, uh, you know, uh, I I couldn't catch on, so I just cheated a lot. <laughs> I got really good at it, but I never absorbed the knowledge. I can't read a book. I uh, That's what it is. 